what can you say about uh, Kenan Lepai, uh, about his effect on his epoch? Uh, and uh, also, uh, can we say that uh, the chairs uh, that are established in the States and China uh, are one of the uh, results of this effect? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me start with uh, the question of the effect of Kenan Rafai on his time period. Uh, he has such an awesome responsibility, on one hand, of being rooted in the classical Sufi tradition, such a master of the Quran, of Ibn Arabi, of Hajat Mevlana Rumi, uh, and continuing that practice. But he's also living in a time that the entire world around us here in Turkey is changing so rapidly. And so he has to hang on to the core, to the heart of the tradition, while also continuing to adapt it perpetually to this changing world. And I'm frankly in awe of the way in which, as the Ottoman society transitions to the Republican period, that he's able to take Tasawwuf from a Darga model, a Tekke model, and really open it up so that the whole earth becomes a darga, the human being becomes a darga, and, uh, and Tasawwuf moves now into shaping the akhlaq of the society as a whole. And here's where I think the universities have uh, a crucial part to play, is, you know, we talk a lot of times about the universities as a place for the humanities. But what the humanities are about is a place to study what it means to be human. And being human is something that we have to become. We have to become the insan, the fully realized human being. And here, the Sufi tradition has so much to teach us about love, about seeking, about finding, about the real essence meaning of, of who we are. Not even who we are, what we are, <laughs> and whose image we have been, we have been created. And so I think Kenan Rifai's model of moving Sufi teachings into academia, into the university, uh, has been a harbinger of things to come. And the work that the Circle of Friends here in Turkad uh, have been doing in terms of opening up spaces for the study of Islam, uh, both in the United States but also in China, is of extraordinary importance. My friends at the university tell me that they don't know of any other organization that do has done something like this. Um, it's the selfless, generous, uh, kindest act that one can do, especially at a time where misunderstanding and fear about Islam and Muslims continues to increase in the West. So how are we going to respond? I think you respond to darkness with light you respond to hatred with love. Um, and at the end of the day, the hope that we have, the truth that we have, is that light, nur, is divine. And when light enters into a room, darkness vanishes. Um, that love is the very being of Allah. And when love enters a community, hatred has to vanish. So this is how we're going to fight Islamophobia. Uh, is we're not going to necessarily be putting up posters and banners everywhere. It's about changing and transforming human beings, uh, particularly working with students. And then each one of these students who take these classes where Sufi teachings and Islamic teachings from the real authentic place are taught, they each one of them becomes an ambassador. They go back to their homes, to their communities, to where they have come from, and they say, really what you see on television is not true. Here, I have studied it in this class, and I can tell you, here's what the Quran says, here's what the life of Hazrat Peygamber says, here's Hazrat Mevlana's teachings. And uh, these students are uh, the best ambassadors that, that we could have. In some cases, they're even better ambassadors than Muslims. Uh, and sometimes the students become <laughs> the Muslims, <laughs> and that also happens. And um, uh, so, alhamdulillah, we're very grateful to uh, have had the Kenan Rafai professorships in American universities now, and also to see that this teaching is extended all the way to China. And um, we hope to be worthy 
of continuing this legacy, inshallah, in the, in the years and decades to come. Can you uh, tell your ideas about this symposium? How it is uh, useful? <laughs> Thank you. So um, I've been fortunate to attend a number of these symposiums in the past about Hazrat Mevlana, uh, Mevlana and women, Shamsa Tabrizi, Sultan Valad, Kinan Rafai. And uh, you know, we say in, in our tradition that to be human uh, means many blessings. Um, the word insan uh, can come from the word for intimacy. We can, we're meant to be intimate with Allah, with each other. It can also come from the word nisyan, which is forgetfulness. We're always forgetting who and what we are, and we're forgetting what treasures we're sitting on. Uh, these symposiums are a part of rediscovering for the larger public the treasure that we're sitting on, especially in this land. I mean, this place is the land of the awliya. Everywhere that you look, there is baraka. Um, frankly, I never understand people who are complaining about how things used to be because this whole place is illuminated. The, the earth of this place, the water of this place, the air of this place, is overflowing with baraka. Um, and it's because of the ashk of the people that have lived here for a thousand years. They made this place sacred. Uh, so these symposia are a part of remembering, remembering uh, who and what has brought the ashk of Allah into this uh, magnificent, beautiful place. Inshallah, as people remember, as we remember, then uh, we can, each of us can strive to become the kind of human being that a thousand years from now, folks who come after us will try to remember who we have been.